So as long as you're putting out fresh and unique content that really, you know, focuses on your users' ends, wants, and needs, they're, you know, Google sees that as a high authority and is going to give you that, you know, higher search engine rank. Hey everybody, CJ Bachman here. Welcome to another episode in the den. Today I am joined by our one and only SEO senior strategist, Damian Arazzini. Damian, welcome. Thanks CJ for having me. We are so happy to have you. Um, we have been doing some really fun episodes lately where we kind of look at some questions that either our clients or our audience members are kind of asking. Um, and a lot of what we hear is in regards to SEO. So if you don't mind, let's just kind of dive right in and yeah. hopefully the audience can walk away with some great information. Yeah. Right. Um, so first and foremost, a lot of people don't necessarily know that SEO is search engine optimization, mm -hmm. but the the thoughts behind it is that it's mostly for large businesses, blockchains. But tell us a little bit about why a small, a local business really needs SEO to thrive with, on the search engines. So first of all, SEO is important for all sizes of businesses, but it's definitely vital for small businesses to have SEO in their marketing strategy. Some small business owners might think that it's you know an unnecessary expense or even not worth the time and effort, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Unlike paid channels where these bigger companies can come in with a higher marketing budget and really cover more of that territory, when it comes to SEO, everyone's starting from ground zero, so it's all about the input you're putting in is going to directly affect the output. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, that in itself is an answer to another question, which is how they can use it to compete with larger companies. Everyone kind of is held to the same standard, the, the same yep. regard. Now, one thing that I can say is that you have to keep in mind that you have massive sites like Wikipedia or, you know, the Walmarts of the world. So if you plan on competing with them, there's some tips and tricks, you know, that can help you do that, but you're not necessarily going to do that word for word. No. Um, so continuing with the big business versus small business, are there any tactics that can help with small budgets. So any SEO tactics for someone who just doesn't have a massive budget to be able to use. Right. So one effective way that small businesses can really compete against those large competitors on a limited budget is building a strong online presence. The easiest way of doing this is creating a Google My Business listing. A GMB, first of all, is free and it gives you the option or the ability to post, you know, your business location on Google Maps or other local search results, which helps people find, you know, products and services like yours in their local area. It you know, also gives you the opportunity to answer questions, garner reviews, or even you know, post links and news articles right on the platform. Another great tactic is your keyword strategy. You, know, you really want to t spend time and understand the search results page and the, the landscape that you're competing in. So you, know, you want to find those keywords that are really providing that valuable insight and targeting what your audience is searching for on Google. Okay, so uh, you know, one tip that I like to tell people about is everybody wants to go for those national terms, right? Mm -hmm. Those national phrases, um, you know, SEO company, digital marketing company, um, you know, for using us as an example. But when it comes to competing with some of those big players in a very competitive space, those long tail keywords, like best digital marketing agency near me, you have an opportunity to really compete with, you know, those larger companies or even a Wikipedia page, you know, when mm -hmm. it comes to informational based sites and things like that. Um, so I totally agree that keywords are a big part of how you can compete and using some of those long tail keywords can definitely help you rise closer to the top for keywords that are more uh, converting for you. Right. Yep. Um, so let's talk a little bit about content, right? So Google has their EEAT standards, and just so I don't mess it up, experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. It's not as simple as, you know, using chat GPT when it comes to creating content that's going to work for your SEO. But tell us a little bit about how SEO and content go hand to hand and how they can help with your online presence. Yeah, so SEO and content really go hand in hand because content's going to be your primary way of improving search engine rankings and bringing that organic website, you know, website, organic traffic to your website. You know, one key way that SEO and content are really intertwined is through targeting relevant keywords. When we're creating content, we want to really target those relevant keywords again that, you know, what your audience is searching for on Google. So as long as you're putting out fresh and unique content that really, you know, focuses on your users' ends, wants, and needs, they're, you know, Google sees that as a high authority and is going to give you that, you know, higher search engine ranking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to create content for the people who are going to be consuming it. So I, I agree. Um, is what should businesses do to kind of keep up with the latest and greatest when it comes to, you know, SEO knowledge? Um, and how often should they be changing out the content on their site to keep their SEO fresh? Right. So it's important to really pay attention to any sort of industry news and any changes, you know, in core 
you know, Google core algorithms and adjust your SEO strategy accordingly. Uh, for my advice for small businesses to really focus on a strong technical SEO to make sure that your site is fully optimized and up to Google standards. You know, this means having fast page load speeds, mobile optimization, make sure, you know, nothing's broken on your site and adding that structured markup to your website. Okay. When it comes to, you know, how often content should be updated, generally SEO takes several months to really start seeing your, you know, results from your efforts. So in that time frame after, you know, you can see what and what's not working. Are there pages that are getting more organic traffic than others? Maybe those pages that aren't getting as much traffic, let's add some fresh relevant content to it. At the same time, you know, it's a good idea to be adding monthly content to your website. This can consist of blogs, articles, you know, testimonials, or even additional service pages. So Google can continuously crawl it. You know, I like the term, you know, fresh content equals frequent indexing. The more content you're adding to your site, Google's going to index that, and that's a higher, you know, potential to increase your search rankings. Oh, I love that. Fresh content equals frequent indexing. Write that one down. That one's great. <laughs> Thanks, Damian. Yeah. Um, so real quickly before we move on to the next piece, there are also some resources that small businesses can use. Cool. So I'm going to kind of give a few of them out, and if I'm missing any, let me know. So for everybody out there listening, you have Moz, which is constantly keeping up with the updates, and sometimes they even hear some of the, the talks before other agencies do. So it's a great resource. So is Search Engine Land, Search Engine Journal, as well as SEMrush. Uh, there are quite a few out there. Are there any that you utilize that I might be missing? No, I mean, SEMrush is the biggest one. Uh, Moz or even Ahrefs, you know, are great, you know, sources to use to see how organic traffic's performing on those pages and, you know, how keywords are ranking over time. Yeah. So I think it's just important to educate yourself as well along the way. And of course, if you are a business owner who's also working inside your business, not just on it, utilize an agency to really help you stay on top of what the latest trends are and the most recent updates. Um, let's talk a little bit about measuring SEO. Um, we talk a lot about data on the show. We deal with data every single day here in the office. But what are some ways that people can measure how well their SEO is performing? Yeah, so there are a couple ways that you know small businesses can really measure their efforts of their SEO. Uh, the biggest one is measuring your organic traffic. This is really seeing how your website's performing in search engines. And the biggest way to measure this is using Google Analytics. Google Analytics is going to give you those traffic metrics such as bounce rate, engagement rate, you know, how long people are staying on your website, how many visitors you're getting. Because again, that's really seeing your overall website performance. You know, another key way that you can really measure your SEO efforts is through keyword tracking. And this is really seeing how your keywords are ranking, you know, over time in the search engine results page. And, you know, if you see keywords that are maybe dropping, let's adjust our SEO. And the last one is my favorite, which I think the most important is, is conversion rate tracking. You know, that's really seeing how, what desired actions your website visitors are taking, whether this is forming, you know, filling out a form, scheduling a service, you know, giving you a call, or even making a purchase. I think, you know, small businesses really should use this conversion rate tracking because it shows how effective your website and you can really see that path that visitors are taking to make that action. Yeah, and I think it's, it's real simple that, and we talk about it um, as well quite often, is that when, when you start digital marketing, you should set goals for yourself, right? You should know what your intent is, um, whether it is just to increase the amount of phone calls that you get, increase the amount of forms, and everything you're doing from a marketing standpoint should be measured against those KPIs. Exactly. Right. So if I am, you know, optimizing every single page of my site and my intent is that I get more people to call, then I need to first start with have I received an increase in calls? And then there are ways to kind of backtrack and find out which pages of your site are giving you the most calls or getting you the most traffic. Right. So I think really starting with understanding truly what are you trying to achieve? What are your goals? And then working backwards yep. from there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about a, a side of SEO that not everyone thinks, and that's the user experience, the customer journey. When they get to your, your site optimization, optimization isn't just the content, right? It's not just a blog. It's not just link building that happens on the back end, but it's also about how the user interacts with your site. How does that affect SEO performance and what are some, you know, things that you can share regarding that? Yeah, so user experience is a huge role, you know, plays a huge role in your marketing strategy because it really affects your SEO based on a couple user, user engagement metrics. The two biggest that I like to look at are bounce rate and your page dwell time. You know, if your website's clean and easy to understand, those website visitors are more likely going page to page navigating through your website, which is going to lower your bounce rate. You know, same thing goes for page dwell time. Dwell time is just how long someone is spending on your website. So if Google sees that people are spending more and more time on your website, they're going to know, first off, that you're relevant, and you're gonna, they're going to know that you're useful to the search query that they searched. And that's a huge factor that plays in, you know, Google search results and search rankings. I think 
user experience is one of the most important, you know, factors of your SEO performance. If you're going to spend all this time and effort, you know, just trying to get people to your website and, you know, getting high searches on Google, and they get to your website and they realize how unfriendly it is to use, they're going to bounce. So if you really want more of those conversions, you need really good user experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like you said, it's not just about, you know, optimizing the site. You know, if it's there, it doesn't mean that they're right. going to come. And if they do come and the site isn't user friendly, then they're obviously going to leave, which is going to affect your dwell time and yep. your bounce rate and things like that. Um, but it's also going to send the wrong signal. Exactly. Um, when they're leaving the site, it is sending the signal to Google that says, hey, there's nothing for me here. Yep. And after a time, once that happens again and again, Google is going to assume that you're not the best result to bring right. back. Um, so let's get into the final roar. Um, and what I would like to do is put you on the spot Spot yet again <laughs> but if you are if I was a small business just starting off right I very low budget very small business and I've never really done a, a lot of marketing for what's the biggest piece of advice that you would give me from an SEO standpoint yeah so my biggest advice you know for any small business owners that want to start on digital marketing and really want to maximize on their ROI is focus on content creation creating content that's high quality that's relevant and informational plays a huge role in search engine rankings. And this is really where you can put your keyword strategy into place and again, really identify your target audience and choose topics that resonate with the customers. Because at the end of the day, it's all about who you're trying to reach and you know the problem you're trying to solve for them is really essential. Right, that's awesome. And everybody listening out there, the thing that you need to remember about SEO is it's not a one and done piece of, of information. It's not you purchase it, you get an optimization, it's put in your hand and you're done and you just move on. It is ongoing. And the reason why it is ongoing is other website owners, your competitors, are updating their information. They are constantly making sure that they have the freshest, most relevant content on their site, whether it's their pages, new pages, new service pages, like you mentioned, blogs, um, the link building that they're doing, all of the community outreach that they're doing. All of these things send signals to Google that they are an active, living, breathing organization. And that continuously gets them to be re-indexed, mm -hmm. as well as crawled by uh, by Google. Google's bots and brought further and further up the search engine results. So you want to make sure that you are actively working for it. Don't fall into the smoke and mirror kind of concept and assume that just a blog handed to you is the only thing that's happening on the SEO side of things, because it's not. There's a lot of work that goes into keeping that content fresh, to re-optimizing it as Google's algorithm changes, to having new links built, to removing old links as they become unworthy or unqualified. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes yep. into that, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, Damian, thank you so much for joining us here. I hope the audience is able to walk away with a little bit more of an understanding about search engine optimization, as well as how content marketing can aid it. So thank you, and hopefully we'll have you in the den again soon. All right, absolutely. Thank you. Bye, everybody.